Hello everybody, Nick here at Scog and Dickie. We appreciate you stopping by for another one of our weekly tech videos. We do these every Friday throughout the year. We do technical videos on parts, on engines, on different uh, technical information that is offered from Chevrolet Performance and the aftermarket. We do it to help out hot riders like you and me. So if you would, please give a like, subscribe and share. And today's video is actually pretty special because this is one that is recommended by our callers. And I should say, I work in performance parts sales and technical assistance, a lot of us here do. and a lot of the ideas we get for these videos are from phone calls we get from customers. For instance, you know it's probably from DOD Delete videos or one of our more popular videos. It's a big, long technical process to do that properly to an engine. We do those videos to help out you guys to answer a bunch of those questions so you can watch something in your convenience to get all the answers you need. We were absolutely bombarded with phone calls about those when they started to become popular, so that's why we made the video. Today's video is no different but it's not near as big as building an engine. So let's dive right into it. What I have in front of me here is a CNC LS3 cylinder head from Chevrolet Performance, as well as an LSA bare cylinder head and a custom CNC ported cathedral port head. Something you'd find on like an LS2, LS6, you know, the 243, 799 casting number kind of heads. Uh, these are cylinder heads I've, I have pulled off the shelf here from our work, and I'm gonna be using them today to answer a big question we get a lot of phone calls about. We have more people that call about the rectangular port specifically, L92, LS3 and the like, CNC cylinder heads from Chevrolet Performance, that they claim that the port job is unfinished. And we're here to bust that myth and explain to you what is actually going on. Now, CNC porting is a great, great thing that has happened over the past couple decades. Before, our grandfathers, our parents, and maybe even some of us when we were learning when we were younger, would take a cylinder head, you'd, you'd break it down, you'd mount it up, you'd get a die grinder, you'd turn on your air compressor and you'd get those carbide bits and those little sand rolls, and you'd spend hours and hours, sometimes even days, porting a cylinder head. And not only that, you really needed to know what you were doing. You can actually mess up a port really, really quick. This is not just about hogging this out to get the most CCs, the most volume you can get out of an intake port. This is about airflow, airflow at different lifts. You can definitely improve high lift on the high end side of the lift of the camshaft, but ruin low end lift, which can hurt more than you realize. Well, when CNC porting came out, we're now using computers to exactly port match every cylinder head to be exactly the same. And then through testing, you can modify that exact CAD file to go in and make these even better and better over time. This is why this is one of the reasons that the LS, LT, and a lot of newer platforms are making such great power once they do start doing heads cam options is because they can do programs like that and really get these down to a true fine art. Now, <clears throat> There's different ways this is done. Sometimes they take a stock casting. These three in front of me, like I said, these are stock cylinder heads, LSA, you know, LS6, LS2, and the one in front of me, of course, is an LS3. They take a stock casting, bolt it down, and it runs through that five axis CNC. You've probably seen videos of it. These things are on a platform and they're moving around all sorts of different ways while a head with a carbide bit is moving and porting that all the way from the valve seat to the top of the port. And they do that on both the intake and the exhaust side here. Now, the problem is there are certain cylinder heads like the cathedral ports, for instance, these, when they're ported, have a lot of material that can be removed, which is good. They can shape these ports to be exactly how they need. The LS3, L92 style heads like I have here, man, these were famous for being such great flowing heads from the factory. So the port job on these is much more fine. They don't really hog out as much material they actually just shape these to be just right. They definitely do some light massaging on the bowl and some light massaging here on the ports. And that's kind of why you start seeing some, some spots like this, Dane will get a close up here, of some spots where it looks like they didn't finish. That isn't unfinished. There's core shift in these cylinder heads. They are cast and they aren't cast 100% perfect. There's a slight variance when they're, you know, sand casting these things and they machine them down. They can be off by a millimeter or so. When that comes to the ports, they're not just gonna hog this out so it looks pretty. This has nothing to do with looks. This has to do with that flow and that port program. So as that bit's going around inside of here, if it misses a, a wall there, if it misses a spot, that's because there was no material to remove, it's not needed. If they just opened up the program to make it look pretty, it actually would hurt all that hard work and the research and development they did to make sure these things flowed the best for you. Now, if you're wondering, but the thing is, is that, man, this port looks like they got more. 
This port looks like they got less. They are still the same size and that slight rough finish actually really doesn't hurt airflow. I have actually seen it for myself. We do have a Superflow 600 in our race shop. I have seen these that are uh, flowed at, uh, I think it's 28 inches is what they flow them at, and they match within less than one CFM of each other. Again, that's the beauty of a CNC program. They make it exact per port. So when you're taking a look at some cylinder heads and you notice maybe an aftermarket casting gets that full port job, well, that's because they cast these ports tiny and then let the CNC program open them all the way out. The cathedral heads, sometimes they get opened all the way out too because these ports were much smaller from the factory. So they actually do have a lot of room to be opened up to be really, really big high flowing heads. But when you take a great flowing head like the LS3 head and you hog it out, it doesn't flow better. So it's just a massage that they do on these things and it makes a big difference. Chevrolet Performance does list the CNC flow numbers on these versus the uh, stock LS3 L92. We'll actually have those numbers in the bottom of the videos or just in the description so you can actually see the difference. So, has your cylinder head been neglected? Is it a defect? No. It's perfectly fine. We sell these all the time. They make great power on a lot of great engines, even some of the ones we build in our race shop. So the next time you get one of these cylinder heads and you see a couple rough spots like that, don't worry about it. You're still getting a great high quality cylinder head that is gonna flow enough to make big power for the street or the racetrack. We appreciate you guys stopping by for another one of our weekly tech videos. Again, do these every Friday. So please give us a like, subscribe, and share it to your friends to help out hot rodders like you and me. And we will see you guys in next week's tech video. Thanks for stopping by.